In my seventh day Sabbath study, I had to answer a question. Does Colossians chapter 2 abolish the five laws mentioned in verse 16 of food, drink, festivals, or high Sabbaths, new moons, and seventh day Sabbaths? Many times I've heard it said, the Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross, and so they are not binding on Christians. Ironically, those same people will say, but nine of them were re-mentioned in the New Testament, so those are reinstated. Colossians 2.14 is usually the go-to scripture for this viewpoint. Ephesians 2.15 is also used. This seems to be the main anti-Sabbath Bible text used in mainstream Christendom. Here's some background to aid in understanding who these believers were and what oppositions Paul was addressing. The city of Colossae was near Laodicea and built on a major trade route through the Lycus River Valley in the Roman providence of Asia Minor, which is southwest corner of modern day Turkey. Paul starts the letter by commenting in the positive about their faith in Christ Jesus, the love they have for reverent brethren, and their constant bearing of fruit in chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. Points A through G below give evidences these churches were predominantly Gentile. The geographic location of Colossae is approximately 1,000 miles west northwest of Israel. In chapter 1 verses 9 through 10 says that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Chapter 1 verse 27 says, To whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Chapter 3 verses 5 through 10 lists sins they are to put off, Jews were very strict about keeping some of these. Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees, memorized the Torah, and was sent to the Gentiles, as we see in Galatians 1.16. The pastor at our local church, Stephen Lancaster, advised, The stokia of the world, as seen in Colossians 2.8 and verse 20, are something other than rabbinic rules. Looking at those two verses, it's self-evident this is not a message against Torah. Chapter 2, verse 13 says, The uncircumcision of your flesh. Jews would have already been circumcised. My image is that Colossae and Laodicea were Gentile brethren who were learning the basics of Torah. There certainly must have been some Jewish influence, but the whole of the letter gives the image that they were battling against influences like Gnosticism, ascetism, and sophistry. Special note, I am open to that some degree these influences could have been rabbinical Jews. In the case of Colossae and the nearby Laodicea, it could have also been some blending of Torah, additions by the Jews, and local societal influences. Given the aggregate of the whole letter, I simply do not see rabbinical influences mentioned. At the time Paul wrote this letter, there was no New Testament. Instead, Colossae was learned by one of their own, Epaphras, as we see in chapter 1, verse 7. And as we observe, Paul was concerned about influences that might draw them away from proper observance of dietary laws, of drink, of festivals, of new moons, and seventh-day Sabbaths. Chapter 1 verse 6 states, Paul states, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Chapter 1 verse 10, Paul states, So that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Chapter 1, verse 21, Paul gives a description of how they were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds. Paul would not have spoken to Jews who knew the Torah in that way, such as he did in Acts 
chapter 22. And so, in this letter, he lists out the ungodly influences that they are to guard against. This greatly helps to give contextual alignment with verse 16, which are Torah commands, where he says to let no one judge them in keeping these seemingly Jewish things. What if a Christian in modern day America did those five things? Would that set us apart from normal religious activity? Abstaining from unclean foods? Avoiding drunkenness? Observing the holy festivals commanded to Israel? Observing God's calendar? And holding the weekly Sabbath as a 24 hour period that is to be held in reverence because it is blessed, it is sanctified or holy? A day for resting and for church assembly? Colossians 2 6 Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So, how did Jesus walk concerning these five Torah based laws stated in verse 16? Jesus was sinless. 2 Corinthians 5 21 says, Who knew no sin? 1 Peter 2 22 says, Who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth? Hebrews 4.15 One who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Food In Mark 7.15, Jesus said, There is nothing outside the man which can defile him if it goes into him. The context is seen in verse 3, is observing the traditions of the elders. And verse 8, Neglecting the commandment of God you hold to the tradition of men. These verses set the context and are clearly not evidence of abolishment of dietary laws as seen in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. Drink Jesus drank wine at times. The Pharisees accused him of being a drunkard. Jesus said, For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking and you say look at him a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners Luke 7 33-34 in spite of this accusation Jesus was not a drunkard because he was sinless also Jesus warned against drunkenness because it prevents one from being ready for his return as we see in Luke 12 45-47 and Luke 21, 34 through 36. Feasts. Jesus kept the feasts. Luke 2, 40 through 43. Chapter 22, 14 through 15. And John 7, 10 and verse 14. New Moon. The above feasts were observed by Jesus and were based on the Hebrew calendar. Also, Isaiah 66, 22 through 23 indicates that moons and Sabbaths will be in the new heavens and new earth. Sabbath, Sabbaton. Jesus undeniably kept the seventh day Sabbath. Matthew 12, 1 through 12, Mark 1, 21, Mark 6, 2. Colossians 2, 13 sets context by stating, dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh. That means they were Gentiles. Verse 14, cancel out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us. Certificate of debt, kerygraphion, and it is used only one time in the New Testament. The word means a handwriting of debt, as in a monetary debt. In this text, it's not stated who these writings were are made by. Conversely, verses pertaining to the Ten Commandments and Moses' writings provide clear context by whom they were written. God in Exodus 31.18, 34.1, and Moses in John 5.45-47. Consisting of decrees is dogma, doctrine, decree, ordinance. Special note number one, God's law, his instruction, is Torah and is not used anywhere in the letter to Colossians. 
special note too. This certificate of debt is described with a qualifier, dogma, which adds context of what this debt is. My summation is that debt in dogma has a different meaning than law of God. Colossians 2.14 also says, which was hostile to us. God's law is not a burden, and it's not hostile. It's a blessing. As you can see in Deuteronomy 4, 5 through 9, Psalms 19, 7 through 10, Psalms 119, Romans 3, 31, Romans 7, 22, 1 Timothy 1, 8 through 10, Galatians 3, 21. Colossians 2, 15 says, Disarm the rulers and authorities he made a public display of them. Did Jesus disarm God and make a dis public display of him and his laws? Chapter 2, verse 17. Things which are a mere shadow of what is to come. Please take notice of the present tense statement. Paul is sending this letter 30 years after the cross. Chapter 2, verse 18. Fleshly mind. This simply cannot be speaking about God's laws. Colossians 2, 20 through 22, the elementary principles of the world, and in accordance with the commandments and teachings of men. Can Paul speak any clearer about the context? These descriptors before and after verse 14 describe people trying to influence with dogma, delude you with persuasive argument, philosophy, empty deception, tradition of men, elementary principles of the world, decrees against us, hostile to us, disarmed the rulers and authorities he made, a public display of them, having triumphed over them. My summary of Colossians 2. Within this chapter of Paul's letter to both churches, Colossae and Laodicea, the exact thing that was nailed to the cross is not stated. Rather, many descriptions of it are given. Those descriptions and the specific Greek words used in no way describe God's laws, statutes, or commands. The certificate of debt, Paul states, is the record of our sins, not the law of God. Paul warns them to be on guard of persuasive argument and to walk in him, that is Jesus, and to let no one shame them for keeping the Torah commands concerning food, drink, festivals, new moons, and Sabbaths. In addition to uh, Colossians 2, Ephesians 2 is often cited. Does it abolish the Sabbath as well? Ephesians 2 is even clearer to understand than Colossians 2, and Paul in verse 11 plainly called them Gentiles and uses very similar language as to what was abolished. Verse 15 says, Abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances.